Today, I will cover how to update the Hanshou H6 6.86 inch driver display screen. This is a big update that addresses my main complaints from my how to use video that I did on June 12th. I'll cover those changes later in the video. I must say, this is a great upgrade. Let's get started. I have three empty flash drives to use for this update process. It saves some time going back and forth from the car to the PC and back again. If you only have one flash drive, you can simply copy the files to the flash drive, install, and then delete. Then do the same process for the other two update files. Here is the WhatsApp message that I received from Hanshou. There is a 125 megabyte download. I click here to begin. It will be saved in the downloads directory. On the screen, you can see the folders. Here I place the download directory on the left side and the flash drive on the right side. Go to the downloads directory and click on the file, then on the directory inside it. Notice there are three updates. I will copy the second update to the flash drive. I know it's not in 123 order, I didn't name the folders. However, you will need to do it in the order 2, 3, and 1. Copy the entire folder called update to the root of the drive. Just drag it over like so. Once it finishes copying, you can then do a Windows device eject and take out the flash drive from the USB port. Now take the second flash drive and insert it into the port. Go back to the download directory and go to update three. Copy the entire update folder to the root of the flash drive. Once done making a copy, do a drive eject in Windows. Remove the flash drive from the PC and place it aside. Insert the last flash drive. Go back to the download directory and go to update 1. Copy the entire update folder to the root of the flash drive again. This is the largest update with the most number of files and large ones at that. Once done making a copy, do a drive eject in Windows. Take the flash drive from the PC and gather up all the flash drives and go to the Tesla. As a reminder, please don't let the power turn off during the installation process. One thing I'd like to add before doing the updates, take a photo of the settings page of the current software in case any of the settings get reset to their default entries. Since the H6 screen uses a USB-C port on the front of the screen, I need to use a USB-A to USB-C adapter. I'll plug it into the flash drive. Then insert this memory card, which is update two, into the front of the display. It's a little hard to see. I have a camera view of the front of the screen just to show you where it is. After a couple seconds, you will notice that the H6 screen will start the update. It will say app update and the percent will increase as it installs. I'll speed this up 20 times to save you the wait. It takes about two minutes to finish. Once you see the screen reboot, you can remove the flash drive. Then insert the second flash drive, which is update three, into the display. Again, you will see a slightly different installation screen that says CV update, and it will also have a percent increasing as it installs. As with the first one, I'll increase it 20 times to finish quickly for you. It takes about four minutes to process. As before, when it restarts, remove the flash drive and insert the third flash drive, which is actually update one. It's probably a good idea to label the drives. This is the longest update and it took about 16 minutes to install. Here I'll speed it up 100 times, and then it's done. Remove the flash drive, and I am done with the update process. 
you'll notice that the main screen has changed. On the original software, the screen just shows a status image of the car. Now it does that and also provides many driver info details on the bottom of the screen, showing the miles remaining, state of charge in percent, odometer miles, and the outside temperature. On the top, it shows the time along with any indicator lights. The image of the car in the center will show if you have any of the doors, hood, or trunk lid open. Now we need to make sure the settings are correct for your preferences. Press the right button towards the left to enter the settings page. Now scroll the right button up or down to move among the different settings. For example, I change temperature to Fahrenheit, hour system to 12, US speed limit sign to on, tire pressure to PSI, car model color to gray, day and night, I'll leave in night mode for now, brightness to follow the Tesla main screen, and turn plaid to on. Currently, Wi-Fi and over-the-air update are still not working, maybe in a future update. At any point, you can press the right button towards the left to save and exit the settings. The settings are updated. We see the main screen shown while the car is in park. Things like distance are now in miles instead of kilometers. To see the dashboard screen, put the Tesla in any gear other than park. I'll show you how to use the dashboard. Scroll the right steering wheel button up or down to change the window on the left of the screen. Down moves to the right and up moves to the left. There are a number of options here. The default view is the tire pressure diagram showing all four wheels. Then we have autopilot follow distance, then theme, and then setup. In setup, press the right button to the right to enter. This is the same setting screen that I just showed you. Scroll up and down to move among the items and press left to save and exit. Let me back up to theme, press right to enter, which lets you choose among the three dashboard user interfaces. Use the right button to scroll up and down to pick one. Press the button towards the left to exit. Do a long press on the right steering wheel button to turn on the front bumper camera, and then press left to exit the camera. Now I will demonstrate the dashboard with different car controls. Move the gear into neutral, reverse, and drive, and you will see the drive letters N, R, and D in the lower center area. Just below that is the power bar, which shows energy being used or regenerated. Next, I will press the turn signal stalk to the left and then to the right. Press the left stalk forward to turn on the high beam headlights. Pull it back to turn them off. Open any door, the hood, or the trunk, and you will see a screen pop up that shows the car and the particular item that is open. When I close the door, it goes away. Here I'll show the front bumper camera again. I don't know if I have mentioned it before, but I really like this handy feature to use while parking. Note all of the driver information on the bottom of the screen. You have battery percentage as well as miles remaining. At the same time, something I wish the Tesla main screen would do. Also, the right image of the car shows the brake lights very clearly when they are activated. Now I will show the three user interface options along with their day and night versions. The first is Sporty, with the adjustable window on the left, large center speedometer, and the car image on the right. This I prefer the most. The second is Classic, with the adjustable window on the left, car view in the center, and speedometer on the right. 
The third is minimalist with the speedometer on the left, adjustable window in the center, and the power meter on the right. Let's take the car for a drive and show you how it works. First up is plaid mode. When this is switched on, the first acceleration from a stop shows the plaid animation. It only shows once until you put the car in park and then in drive again. It lasts about 10 seconds. Pulling down on the gear selector, I put the car in cruise control. The cruise control lights up and the image of the car changes to match. Pulling down on the gear selector again, I put the car into autopilot. The autopilot blue steering wheel lights up and the image of the car has the road turned blue to let you know. When autopilot flashes a warning to grab the wheel, the screen will also flash a blue light towards the top to get your attention. Simply grab the wheel and the warning will go away. Here's the screen in day mode. I'll switch to another theme. This was sporty and now it is classic. And here's the last theme, which is minimalist. Another thing to note that while driving and using your turn signal to change lanes, the blind spot detection will flash red if there is a car in your blind spot, on the left or right of the screen depending on if you are going left or right. Here's an example of the car slowing down. You can see that the red brake lights are showing on the car image and also on the road surface below it. And that's it for the driving section of this video. I hope that gives you a better idea of how this driver display works and how the new update makes it even better. If you are a current owner of the H6 6.86 inch driver screen, contact Handshow customer service and they will send you the download file to update your screen. Eventually, this may be posted to their website for download. If you purchase this screen, all new units will have the firmware update already applied, so you're good to go. So in conclusion, this was a fairly easy upgrade to the existing Handshow H6 6.86 inch driver display that came out two months ago. I'm impressed that they listened to my feedback from my review and incorporated those changes into the firmware update. This includes larger icons and text, better color combinations, especially a more legible day mode. They removed the duplicated speedometer mile per hour or kilometer per hour number. Little things like the brake light display are even better than what the Tesla screen shows. The overall design takes advantage of the widescreen display and just a nicer, more refined look than the original software. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.